and fans of Disco Godfather, Fitz Houston here. And how you doing, Ronnie and, and fans? You know, it's really a pleasure to be here and take, take me back in time, so to speak, because when Ronnie contacted me and said the title Disco Godfather, I went to a time warp. <laughs> 1979 is when that film was, was actually filmed, and it was my very first film. And I just got out of grad school for filmmaking and screenwriting, and I had the opportunity to actually be cast in that role of Kilroy, the snitch, the cop that always tipped off all the people that the cops were coming. And of course, those of you who know the film really well, you know that they suspected me. And so the lead, Rudy Ray Morick, set me up with a, a dummy phone call to find out if I was going to make a phone call. And sure enough, I made the phone call. And then that's when they knew it was me. And of course, I found that they knew it was me. And then I committed Harry Carey, my most unique memory of that film. <laughs> now, why, why is that a memory? Well, think about it. You're lying in a bathtub in your skivvies and they come and pour two quarts of pig guts on top of you. Now, I don't know what you think about that, but first of all, it was cold. I said, I told the guys, could you at least make it warm? It's bad enough that I'm laying in a bathtub with blood of a pig laying all over my his guts and blood. I'm soaking in all these pig guts, but that's what they use to show after I committed Harry Carey, my guts are all over the place. So, of course, that's what the effect was to make that look so real. But that's one of my most fond memories of uniqueness of that film was that particular scene right there. Now, that, that one scene, they actually had to time how much they ended up showing in the final cut because that scene was so bloody, of course, that it almost made the film rating change just because of how gross it was. And if they spent too many seconds showing the grossness of my blood and guts, that would have made it an R film automatically, now, equal, even though I think it ended up being R anyway, but it, it would have been rated even heavier just because of blood and guts. Because if they if they released it the way they shot it, the way they shot it was starting at the blood trail, slowly moving to the tub, starting at my feet, slowly moving up, and looking at the blood and guts, and then I died. As you saw in the film, they only showed you about two seconds... <laughs> Because the the rule is, if you show too many blood and guts for more, I think five seconds or more, that's when you get in trouble with ratings. And they'll make it go more serious ratings because of the unnecessary violence. So that's the secret behind that bloody scene in the tub with Officer Kilroy. <laughs> Other than that, it was a fun group to work with. A lot of us were new actors. Rudy Ray Moore was in the name, of course, uh, at that time. At that time. And most of us were new actors, and we were getting used to spreading our wings and getting a taste of Hollywood and our first film. So it was a fun experience. Other than that, the other, other thing I remember was I didn't eat spaghetti meatballs for about two months because because the, the caterer who brought the uh, spaghetti meatballs, my memory was that was lunch every day. <laughs> so I didn't care if I saw spaghetti meatballs for a couple of months because I was so tired of eating spaghetti and meatballs. But you know what? The fun thing about it is when you're making films the best you can, you're not even worried about eating the same thing every day. You're trying to get a, a film made. And that's what made it so unique. And that's what taught me as a young filmmaker is about getting it in the can, get it produced, and get it distributed. So many ways I've learned since then is all kinds of ways to get it in the can you know, you, um, you, you're some uh, guerrilla filmmaking. You've got hiding and coming out and shooting and going back to hiding. I mean, so many, that's part of guerrilla filmmaking. There's so many different ways of getting it shot. But that's how we did it back then. And the old Dunbar Hotel, the hotel that we filmed that entire movie in, was a, was a, um, a unique landmark at the time, back in the days. And so they donated the time. They knew Rudy Ray Moore. And they donated, I, I believe, the facility for his filmmaking because of all that he had done for them as a celebrity. So that's it, Ronnie. Those are my little tips for the day. The, the bloody blood and guts, the, the old Dunbar Hotel, and spaghetti meatballs, the entire shoot. <laughs> hey, hey, best of you guys. It's a pleasure meeting you, Ronnie. And hey to all the fans. What's up? What's up, yo guys? Hey, what's up with you guys? My, uh, my website is FitzHouston.com. I'm still putting some of my latest stuff up on there right now. I have a YouTube channel. Just go FitzHouston slash, uh, excuse me, YouTube.com slash uh, FitzHouston Productions, P-R-O-D-S. 
I also have a ministry. I became a minister five years ago. So that is youtube.com slash Fitzhouston or my, um, my fitness channel that I have is Fitzhouston Sports. So those three channels, the main channel I do now is the ministry channel. And so uh, I'm still I'm still producing. I got about 1,200 films, 1,200 excuse me films, 1,200 videos on YouTube at this particular time. So check me out. Say hey. Uh, give me a uh, give me a holler under the videos in uh, Fitzhouston P R O D S, and I'll give you a shout. Hey, God bless you guys. Have a blessed day. I'm so glad to meet all of you. God bless you, Ronnie. Thank you for thank you for the shout out. Take care. Bye bye. Guten Tag, my Damen und Herren, wie geht? Entschuldigen Sie bitte, meine Deutsch ist nicht sehr gut. Ich, ich habe nicht mehr an den, mit den äh, ich spreche kann. So, I'll speak in English. Disco Godfather. It was my very first movie I ever did after college. I have all my degrees in theater, um, uh, degree from the University of Notre Dame and the University of Michigan. Uh, scholarships to Yale and Cornell and studied in London at the London Shakespeare Academy but this was my very first major role in a, in a movie here in LA. I made $50 a day and it had the time of my life. I thought I was rolling in dough. Never made that much money in my life. Two days, I think it was two days, either two or three days, but I think it was two days. It was such a learning experience for me to get to be on a movie set and get to see all the pressures uh, because it was low budget. Rudy did low budget movies, but they were very successful. Rudy has always been successful. All his, all his movies made money. So, but to be a part of that was thrilling. I, even though I've done major Hollywood movies now from Speed and Seven, The Color Purple, I'm Gonna Get You Sucker, and of course The Five Heartbeats, you know, TV shows, Cheers, Frasier, Charm, all kinds of stuff. That always will have a special place in my heart because of the fact that it was the first. And it was such a learning experience for me. I just learned how to comport myself on a set. So I really hope you enjoy the movie. And you know what I want? I would love to have some Swiss chocolate and some cheese from Switzerland. <laughs> so anyway, besides all of that, Really enjoyed this film, and I'm very honored that you asked me to be a part of the opening, and honored to be that you asked me to talk to you before the film starts. So, all that being said, Felicia's Van Nachten in Dein Brooklyn's New Jahre. Not very good German, but also Bischbeter. Danke sehr.